This is the most powerful and quickest Kia available on the market today. This is the Kia EV6 GT, the sportiest version of the EV6, fully electric of course. Welcome to It's Only Electric. This is my full review of the Kia EV6 GT. Let's start. This is a crossover measuring 4.7 meters in total length and has a wheelbase of 2.9 meters. It weighs 2.1 tons. Driving on all four wheels, having two motors, one at the back that's newly developed for the GT model specifically and a bit smaller motor at the front. The same motor at the front as you find in the regular all-wheel drive version. Together putting out 585 horsepower, 430 kilowatts or 740 newton meters of torque. It should be able to do 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.5 seconds and has a top speed of 260 kilometers per hour. This is a quick car, but at the same time seems to be fairly practical. It's equipped with 21 inch wheels, Sport Wheels, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, 255, 40 all around, so a non-staggered setup. Looks really good together with the lime green brake calipers, also standard in the GT version. So the EV6 is built on a fully electric platform, so the bonnet is a bit shorter, which means that you get more room inside the cabin. Aggressive looking front. The car industry in general seems to be working with smaller and more slimmer headlights. Not Kia, they want the headlights to be a prominent part of the front design. Very advanced, fully pixel LED lights. Active grille at the front, nice looking black accents, makes the car look a bit more sporty and aggressive. So the unique and strong design elements from Kia really moves on to the back. For instance, this big wing with built-in LED lights lights up the, this prominent shoulder and sporty shoulder during nighttime. Looks good and a fun idea. One thing that I have a hard time getting used to is the rear end design, especially this empty area here. It looks like someone just removed the taillight, threw it away, <laughs> put a charge port there instead. But I must say that in this color combination, the moonscape matte gray color together with the black accents, the built-in taillights, the turn signal lights, it really starts to make sense. For me, this is the absolutely best looking color available on the Kia EV6 currently. It's also the most expensive one. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. But I think this is by far the best looking color you can get on this one. And it really makes the car pop out a bit more, especially together with the big 21 inch rims. It really looks something special. And I have recognized that a lot of people stops and looks at the car. And I mean, there's a lot of EV6s out there, but there is not a lot of GTs with this color combination. The GT has a lot more power, bigger rims and stickier tires and that really eats up efficiency and actual range because it has the exact same battery pack as the lower trim versions of 77.4 kilowatt hours in gross capacity and 74 kilowatt hours in net capacity NMC battery pack. The good thing though is that you can charge it from 10 to 80 percent in only 18 minutes and that thanks to the 800 volt support so if you charge it at a ionity charger, for instance, you can charge it with a speed up to 239 kilowatts as a peak power, and that's really quick. One of the quickest charging curves on the market currently. You can also charge it on a regular 400 volt charger. When it comes to AC charging, home charging, it supports 11 kilowatts and three phase charging. So one of the best features with the EV6 GT is that it has a lot of power and performance but it's also still practical. A powered lift gate, 480 liters of boot capacity. On top of that, a frank that delivers an extra 20 liters of storing capacity. A parcel shelf divider that you can detach and stow away underneath, really practical. One nice feature is that you can see the added anti-roll bars for the GT version to make the car uh, roll less than performance driving. You can add a tow hitch with a tow capacity of up to 1,800 kilograms, 
foldable seats split into two, 60, 40, and a ski latch in the middle. Let's check the back seat because this is one of the nice perks of the EV6 GT. It's a big back seat and as you see, the front seat, the sport seat is adjusted after my liking. I'm 193 centimeters tall or six foot three. So really good leg room, but not as good room for your feet. So you can squeeze in your feet like five centimeters, then it stops because there is something in the way. The bottom of the seat stops you. When it comes to headroom, a bit cramped. I mean, I'm touching the headroom now. Normally, this is not the way I sit, but not a great amount of headroom. And the back seat is actually adjustable. So the most straight sitting position is this one. And then you sit like 90 degrees. No one sits like this, but it gives you some extra amount of space in the, in the boot. But uh, this way, okay, I don't touch the, the roof this way. So, but here I start to touch it. So if I lean the seat backwards, the headroom gets less. And this is the most reclined position possible. So you can have a nice time here in the back seat uh, if you are a bit shorter than I am. So a nice back seat with some good practical aspects as a armrest with two cup holders, some extra storage, two USB-C ports in the middle, no air vents at the central compartment. The air vents are actually on the B pillars here. So you can manually adjust it after your liking. I think that's a better solution than having it here because you can adjust it better and it comes closer to your face and your upper body. When it comes to the doors and the quality, uh, hard plastics at the top, the new book or Alcantara feel here in the middle, nice piano black details, but also heated seats. You can control the seat heating at the back by pushing the button here at the armrests. So all in all, a nice back seat with a lack of headroom. Let's move on to the front seats and the front row. There is a couple of differences compared to the regular EV6. The first one is, of course, the very obvious one, and that's the sport seats. So this is really classical sport seats, fully manual, not powered, and really limited adjustment. Lime green stitching, Alcantara or Nubuk feel. There is a couple of things that I don't like with these seats. The first one is the neck rest. The headrest is really way too backward leaning, means that when you push the car, you really don't get the support you need for your head. And it's not a relaxing position to sit like this. So headrest is the first thing I miss. The second thing is the lack of extendable thigh support. The third thing is lumbar support. So a bit more Spartan seats to save weight and also to add some extra touch of sportiness, at least the feeling of it. Uh, otherwise, I think they are comfortable. There's actually one more thing that I want to complain about, and that's the, the side bolsters here. There is some hard plastics inside of it. You don't feel it that much when you feel it like this, but that means that when you drive longer trips, or if you have uh, bigger thighs or long legs, as I have, and you want to spread your legs a, a bit, you actually feel the plastics inside, and it gets a bit annoying after a while. The other difference for the GT version is actually the dry mode selector. Normally you only have one to the left that says dry mode. On the GT version you also have a lime green button that says GT. And that's the activation of the dry mode GT. The most aggressive mode you can use. Another thing on the steering wheel is the lime green stitching that adds some extra finesse and nice touch to the cabin. Otherwise, it looks the same as the traditional EV6 does in the cabin. Two big screens, 12.3 inch each, fitted together on top of the dashboard. Hard touch materials, a bit too much hard touch materials, but with some nice uh, details and graphics on it. A GT logo, most further to the right. Built-in air ventilations, very sleek looking, going like a line all together. A glow box, very deep glow box, I must say. The extra screen underneath here. This one is really nice, but it's a bit over-engineered. So you can switch the functionality on this screen between shortcuts and ventilation. And when you have it on ventilation, you use the wheels here to control the dual zone AC, the temperature. And when you switch it back to the uh, shortcuts, 
you actually control the volume with the same button. This can get a bit confusing sometimes, uh, especially when you have a passenger that doesn't know about this and want to adjust the volume and then instead adjusts your temperature at your side. Uh, so a bit confusing if you're not used to it. I think the position and the idea of it is, is great, but I think it gets a bit too complicated when you can switch the whole functionality of the panel. So when it comes to the mid console, it's a floating mid console with some great storage underneath with a lot of charging options. So a USB-A port, and that's for controlling and connecting your phone for using Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It's only by wire not wireless, a USB-C port, a, another USB-C port, and a 12 volt, 180 watt output. A lot of functionality is collected on top of this central dashboard. Seat heating, steering wheel heating, the ignition, you turn on and off the car uh, this way, the gear selector, parking assistance functionality, you can turn on and turn off the, the parking sensors, a Qi charger, two adaptive cup holders and some extra storage here for storing your key etc and a fairly deep pocket here for storing random things no USB-C port in this compartment so the Kia EV6 GT comes fully equipped to Sweden and the price for that is 820,000 Swedish crowns or 73,000 euros that also includes things like the meridian premium sound system with 14 speakers not the best sound system i've tried it has powerful mids and highs but lacks a bit in the bass so let's drive the car and talk about the dynamics the suspension the comfort and the level of performance you immediately feel the difference between the lower trim EV6 cars compared to the GT. It's a lot stiffer, it's more noise in the cabin and that's due to several reasons. So one reason is of course the bigger rims, 21 inch rims, that gives you a lot less rubber, lower profile tires, that makes the car a bit more uncomfortable and on top of that adds a lot of cabin noise because the tires are wider and also sportier to support the extra amount of power that this car actually delivers. The second thing that makes the car different is the active dampers. So Kia has been able to fit active dampers into the car to make the car feel more sporty and to give you a bit better support when driving it harder. But this also punishes the car because when putting it into Echo or Standard, it still doesn't feel comfortable enough. It's a bit stressful in the vertical travel. It's a bit harsh to ride it. So the combination between the low profile tires and the adaptive dampers make the car a bit too harsh, even on the softer dry modes. So whilst talking about the dry modes, there is a couple of dry modes. To the left on the dry mode selector, you have actually three modes, Echo, Normal and Sport. And to the right, you have the Lime Green GT button that actually adds two more dry modes. First one is GT. The second one is called My Dry Mode, and that's the individual mode you get that you can adjust after your own liking, uh, like the adaptive suspension, the steering wheel stiffness. There is big differences between the dry modes. When driving on Echo, the car feels very tame and feels like you're like losing half of the power. When switching over to normal, you get a lot more power and it feels a lot more snappy immediately Let's switch over to sport and you immediately feel added snappiness and it gives you all the torque and power available in the car. Good thing though that it still keeps the traction system, the traction control active. And as soon as you press the lime green GT button, you should be very aware of that it turns off the active traction control. That means that you are actually on your own. The car behaves very well until it doesn't and it doesn't give you any warning any sign whatsoever you just immediately lose control uh, i have experienced that and it's a bit scary so it's with mixed feelings i use the gt drive mode and floor it because it's really fun to drive but at the same time extremely sneaky it seems to send a lot of power to the front axle and a bit too much torque so suddenly you lose control of the front axle and then the rear axle 
and it happens in a split second without any warning, without any signal at all. You feel in 100% control, then suddenly you're not. So when driving on GT mode, you should really be careful, especially on a bit damp roads, you will lose control very easy. So use GT mode with extreme care. Just, just a recommendation from me. But it is so powerful and <laughs> the lack of a headrest really makes it a bit more uncomfortable because you really need to push your body forward not to hit your head at the backrest because there is too much space between your head and the neckrest. The nasty thing is that it starts spinning at the front but I don't feel if it's spinning at the back. But it probably does because, I mean, the rear motor is stronger, a lot stronger than the front motor and it's probably spinning, but I don't feel it. And that's the, the issue here. You don't really feel the border between having control and losing control. So that's the dry modes. Let's talk about the regen and recuperation. You have paddles on the steering wheel for controlling the, regener the level of regeneration. And you have a couple of levels. So if you press the paddle to the right, you decrease the amount of regeneration. So when you have it on zero, it coasts. It's like driving the car in neutral. Then, you, then when you press the left one, you add some recuperation and you have four different levels. Zero, one, two, and three, and on the third level is the highest amount of recuperation. And on top of that, if you press it once more, you actually get the mode called Max, or iPedal driving. And iPedal driving is in this case the same thing as one pedal driving, meaning that you bring the car to a full stop when releasing the accelerator at the red lights. And the iPedal mode works really good because the two permanent magnet motors really gives you a great amount of regen and gets the car to a full stop at red lights etc. So I mostly drive on that mode. So I haven't talked about the operating system. This is a Ford car I'm using with the same operating system. First off the Ioniq 5, the Ioniq 6 and, and then a Kia EV6 all-wheel drive car all running the same operating system and I must say that the operating system works really good if you know it. It takes a couple of days to get used to the system. It's a bit too complicated. It's a bit too uh, user unfriendly. So things can be done to make it easier. But once you get used to it, you really like it because there's a lot of neat and nice features available in the system. This is a high technology car with really good features, but you need to give it some time to understand and to utilize everything. So my final recommendation would be to go for the traditional all-wheel drive car, the lower trim version with the GT line exterior, if you like the looks of it. That would be the sweet spot. It's a bit cheaper. You get enough or plenty of power to have fun whilst driving it, but yet uh, you can utilize it in a better way. And on top of that, you have a lot more range because a big minus with this car is still lack of range and high efficiency. The efficiency is still a bit far away from be optimal. I mean 424 kilometers. The battery pack is not the biggest I know and that the purpose by using the same battery pack in this car is of course to save some weight and to have and, and to gain some good and fun driving dynamics. You don't want to add too much weight to the car so I understand and I get that point but still the efficiency is not really in place so a bigger battery pack or even better, higher efficiency would have been good. So if you compare it to other cars in the same segment with similar power, this is one of the cars with, with the lowest efficiency. And I really don't understand why the difference is so big between the regular all-wheel drive version and the GT version. What's making such a big difference? I mean, you don't need to utilize all the power all the time. So I don't know it could have been a bit more efficient. I think that's all. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And as I always say, stay electric. Thank you for watching. Speak to you soon.